The Bible and the Environment. What does the Bible say about our responsibility for our planet's environment? As Christians, how do we steward our environment well? Let's take a look at why we as followers of Jesus should care for our environment. The natural world we live in, plant and animal life, the oceans, lakes and rivers, things like that. These days, we have people on all ends of the spectrum, from not caring at all and doing harm, to treating the environment as sacred, making it even more important than people. But what insight and teaching can we take from the Bible to help us in our day-to-day -day life as followers of Jesus help care for all that he has made? First, why should Christians care about the environment? It doesn't sound very spiritual. Environmentalism can be almost like a religion. And when you think about it, people since the dawn of time have worshiped things in nature, like the sun, the moon, stars, and animals. I'm not talking about cult-like overemphasis on nature, but the Bible clearly teaches that the natural world, the environment, matters to God and needs to matter to us too, his people. Here are six reasons why followers of Jesus, us, should care about the environment. Number one. God created it. The first couple chapters of Genesis lead us through God's creation of the universe, our planet, and everything on it, including us humans. At the end of every day, he said, it is good. It's good. He's put us in an environment that has everything we need for life and health. Number two, God gave people stewardship of the earth. Genesis 1, and 28 says, God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. God blessed them, this is Adam and Eve, and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth. In Genesis 9, God said the same thing to Noah and his family after the flood. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear and terror of you will be in every living creature on the earth, every bird of the sky, every creature that crawls on the ground, and all the fish of the sea. They are all placed under your authority. That's verses 1 and 2. Psalm 8, 4 through 6 says this, What is man that you remember him, the son of man that you look after him? You made him a little less than God and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him Lord over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. God assigned people the job of ruling over the earth and everything in it. Do you think it pleases him when we do a bad job with that? Abuse his creation rather than care for what he calls good? All right. The third reason why Christians should care about the environment is because the Bible is full of scriptures that use nature to teach us about God, ourselves, and how to live. There are dozens of references to animals, trees, agriculture, the seas and water, the seasons and other things he made in nature. From Genesis to Revelation, you'll find verses in our Bible that refer to nature, this creation God made and gave to us to care for. It seems important to him. Don't you think it means it should be important to us too? Jesus commends faithful stewards with reward and authority. Matthew 25 and Luke 19 both tell about Jesus' parable of the faithful stewards. The master gives his servants different amounts of money according to their ability and leaves the country for a long time. When he finally returns, his stewards have to give an account of what they did with this money, how they invested it to further the interests of the master. In both places, the master, Jesus, rewards the servants who invested what he gave them and increased it, and he punishes the servant who buried the money in the ground and didn't do anything with it. These stories can mean a lot of things, but we can for sure apply care of the environment to one of the areas God has given people stewardship over. People like you and me who love him and live our lives to follow him can especially care for this wonderful natural world he made. Especially because we believe he did make it, that it's not some random collection of atoms and molecules with no purpose. Number five. Science shows again and again that nature is a powerful factor for human health. That's physical health, but also mental, emotional, and spiritual health. We know that pollution in the ground eventually makes its way to our food and waterways and drinking water. That harms all of us, animals, humans, and plant life. 
We know when the environment is harmed, it has a ripple effect on the life and health of every other living thing. When the environment is cared for, though, that also has a ripple effect. A healthy environment is healthy for everything else. It's so interrelated, the way the Lord made it all. And part of his design for us people is to take on our assignment as caregivers of it. Number six, we also know that when the environment isn't cared for properly, it's the poorest people who suffer the most. Wealthy people can lobby to have environmental hazards like landfills and mining far away from where they live, travel, and work. But those struggling from paycheck to paycheck usually don't have the political connections or resources to do that. This is a huge topic that I won't get into more here, but one very big way we can help care for the poor is to make sure we care for their natural environment. Things like fertile farmland, safe drinking water, or not exploiting their natural resources. All right, let's do a quick review of these six points. Number one, God created our environment and called it good. Caring for it honors him. Number two, he gave us stewardship over it and expects us to care for it as well. Number three, the Bible keeps referring to all aspects of nature in both Old and New Testaments. Number four, Jesus commends and rewards faithful stewardship. Number five, a healthy environment is key to healthy people. And number six, caring for the environment helps all people and is an important part of taking care of the poorest people in our world. Do you have another reason why God's people should care for the environment? Let me know in the comments. Now, what does a biblical environmental worldview look like? There are five ways the Bible informs our worldview about our natural environment. First, the natural world has intrinsic value or built-in value because God created it and called it good. One pendulum swing says the natural world isn't spiritual, so it's not important. That's called Gnosticism. The pendulum can swing the other way too, though, and that's the second point. We're to honor and care for the environment, but distinguish it from its creator. A biblical worldview says God is separate from his creation, not part of it. We don't worship it, we worship God. Third, people are a blessing, not a curse. Children are a blessing, not a curse. The Bible is clear that people are the pinnacle of God's creation and made in his image. Four, a biblical worldview treats money and our neighbor in godly ways. It promotes economic health and freedom. The countries with the most economic health and individual freedoms are the countries able to do the most to help steward the health of the environment. And fifth, God has given us the responsibility to care for the natural world in a way that honors him and loves our neighbor. That can get complicated, but we can and should ask for his wisdom. So what can it look like practically to care for the environment? Here's where we get to the nitty gritty. It seems so overwhelming, at least to me, but one of my favorite quotes about stewardship is this, no one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Here are a few ideas how we can help care for the environment in practical ways in our day-to-day -day lives. We can quit or drastically reduce our use of single-use plastics, especially plastic bottles and food packaging. Plastic is a wonderful invention and has added so much to our modern lives, but it's also one of the biggest polluters on the planet. It doesn't decompose. So every plastic item that's thrown away sits in landfills and in our oceans for a very long time, centuries. Do you have any idea how many plastic bottles we Americans buy every single year? 50 billion every year. And that's just here in the U.S. And only about 9% of those are recycled. We can do something about that. On the subject of plastics, we can use less disposable plastic and more reusable storage containers in our kitchens. I started doing this a few years ago after I wrote my first blog post about caring for the environment. Instead of putting everything in Ziploc bags and baggies, I make sure we have enough glass and plastic covered containers on hand and use those instead. Yes, it means I have to wash a few more dishes, but we save a lot of money at the same time, and I feel good about throwing away less plastic. I feel like I'm honoring the Lord by doing that, honestly. And here's a big one for us coffee lovers. Make your own coffee at home with a regular coffee maker. 
K-cups and disposable coffee shop cups are a huge contributor to landfill waste globally. This source says that two and a half billion single-use coffee cups are thrown away every year. Those are the cups you get through your drive through coffee shop. And this one says the K-cups already in our landfills could wrap around the earth more than 10 times. That's 249,000 miles of K-cups, which are made of plastic and don't decompose. If you love your Keurig too much to stop using it, consider using reusable K-cups and bring your own thermos to the coffee shop if that's a non-negotiable part of your routine. Something else we can do practically is to buy fewer things and use them longer. Again, this is helping keep more junk out of our landfills because those landfills are next to somebody's house if not yours, and they impact all of our land and water eventually. Here's another one. Did you know it's actually illegal, at least here, to throw away electronics in the garbage, especially items with lithium or rechargeable batteries? It's way more convenient to throw them away, but it's so harmful to the environment and to people. Instead, find recycling centers near you that take them and bring them there. Some other ways we can help care for environment are to pick up trash when we see it, Reduce the use of chemical lawn fertilizers, and for those of us in the snow states, use less salt-based de-icers during the winter. We can combine trips when we run errands, uh, carpool when it works, use public transportation if it's accessible. Do your home recycling if your community offers it. Plant native flowers in your yard that attract native birds and pollinators. If you're so inclined, get involved with a local environmental nonprofit that's doing good in your area. This can be either with your money or your time. A lot of these ideas are really about weighing convenience over care. We're so used to our convenience that we forget these choices can have a real impact in other areas. I guess the main point of this Bible study is to hopefully show that caring for our environment is one way, one important and practical way we can love and honor the Lord and love our neighbor. So ask the Lord what he would have you do as a good steward of the environment. Let me know in the comments below what you already do to help care for the environment or what you think the Lord is asking you to start doing. We're all in this together, folks. Thanks for watching. As always, there's a link below to some free study sheets that go with this study. You can download them and print them for your own use or for a study group you're part of. May God richly bless your walk with him today, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.